Sedimentary rocks are sort of the catch-all category of rocks. As you'll see when we get a metamorphic rocks, it has a pretty easy definition of rocks that were some other kind of rock that were subjected to heat or pressure, thereby changing the texture or appearance. So that's pretty straightforward. Igneous rocks, as you already found out, are things that are related to the cooling of magma. So you have the intrusive and the extrusive, but they all have to do with brand new fresh rocks from brand new molten earth cooling into a rock form. So all those ones are igneous rocks. Now sedimentary rocks are just sort of the broader category that catch all the other rock types. So within sedimentary rocks, you're going to find individual minerals. You're going to find rocks that contain fossils. You'll find our fossil fuel sources, such as peat and coal. Obviously not petroleum because it's liquid, but you'll find the rocks associated with them. You'll also find the rocks where the group is named after of sediments, things that are detritus or things that settle out of bodies of water. So things like sandstone or shales. So it's a really broad category with three subgroups. Those subgroups rely upon another root word that we're going to go into. And that root word is clastic. It comes from clastos, the Greek word for broken in pieces. So you might expect it to just be a bunch of broken stuff, but the operative word here is pieces. So it's broken in pieces. So when something is clastic, it's a bunch of pieces stuck together. So sometimes you'll be able to see those individual pieces, like the sandstone we met in an earlier video. You can see the individual grains, and you can tell that is clastic. You also have this one here, where you it's, it's called a conglomerate, where you have a bunch of pieces clearly stuck together. That's not a pebble I can just pluck off. This is all lithified into a solid rock, but it's clastic. It's made up of pieces. Other examples we have is this one here. You can see that it's a bunch of little tiny pieces. And if you were to have an excellent TV screen, and if I had an excellent camera, you'd be able to see that these are fragments of seashells. But this one too is clastic. Another example of clastic is this very crumbly piece. If you were to pick this up, it feels almost like a bit of styrofoam. It's very low density, it's really lightweight, and just like styrofoam, it breaks apart very easily. But it still counts as a sedimentary rock because it's a bunch of stuff stuck together. So that one there is clastic. It's naturally occurring, it's cohesive as a rock must be, so rocks have to be naturally occurring and cohesive. and this one here, it's called peat, is a sedimentary rock within the bioclastic group. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other clastic specimens that maybe don't look like clast because it's really hard to see the individual grains, but if you were to zoom in, it really is stuff stuck together. So this one here, peat, this one can be burned in fireplaces. It's burned in places such as um, in Ireland, they use peat in their fireplaces. And it's a lot like a classic fossil fuel However, it's far more lightweight. This is from a bog where you had layers and layers of grass that instead of decomposing as they would be in, in an oxygen-rich environment, they were in an anoxic or oxygen-free environment. So the materials and the carbon within them, instead of breaking down, were condensed into this now carbon-rich pellet form, which is sort of like a precursor to coal, which is also carbon-rich, also a fossil fuel, and can also be combusted for heat and energy. So this one here, coal, it's clastic. You probably haven't seen coal because here in California we tend not to use um, coal for our source of electricity, although about half of the United States still uses coal for electricity production, but we don't. So here we have a bit of coal, and coal is clastic. If you were to look deep, deep into this, you would find little teeny tiny microfossils and bits of grains and stuff. So it's technically clastic, even though you can't see the individual grains. Another example of that is shale. Shale, you can see that it breaks off in this uh, sort of flat plane of cleavage. It comes off in layers. You can kind of see the layers of how it deposited or sedimented. But it's so fine grained that you can't see the individual pieces. If you were to picture something like mud, where mud is like a really smooth mud, like a lovely mud you can squish your toes into and it doesn't feel grainy, you know it's made up of grains. You know it's made up of really fine grain stuff, but you can't see them. So if that mud were to solidify into a mudstone, it would look a lot like this shale where you know it's made up of small pieces, but you can't see them. So those two are clastic. So for clastic, we have two main subgroups. 
first one is siliclastic, and the second one is bioclastic. As you can see, these are both portmanteaus of words you're already familiar with. So bio, as in biology, things that are alive, this is going to be a clastic material made from previously alive specimen, like this one, made up of seashells, bioclastic. The coal, made up of living things. It's carbon rich because it comes from organisms that were later condensed and compressed into this carbon rich specimen. So this too is bioclastic. Now siliclastic, you guys know sil or silic, that comes from silica. So something that is siliclastic would be a sandstone. All sandstones are going to be siliclastic. So things that are made up of what is clearly other rocks are going to be siliclastic. So we have a conglomerate, just a bunch of rocks all stuck together. It's a siliclastic specimen. And this one is called breccia. We'll see it again in our siliclastic video. This one is also siliclastic. It's rocks stuck together. Now our third group for sedimentary rocks is inorganic or mineral. I didn't make a card for it because I already introduced both of those terms in our mineral video. So inorganic or mineral, it's going to be just raw minerals sometimes, such as our rock salt. And so I licked the salt for the other video, and yeah, it's salty because it's salt. So this is the large rocky version of rock salt. If you remember our halite specimen, it's made up of halite, but our halite specimens were cubic in nature. This one does not have that cubic appearance because the individual grains are much smaller. However, it's still a rock. So all minerals are rocks, as you will recall from our mineral video. And this one here is rock salt. So this mineral is a sedimentary rock.